Hello everyone and welcome to a new tutorial on UMEP, the Urban Multiscale Environmental Predictor. Today I will teach you how to um, generate another key a special data um, input for the UMEP, which is the land cover types. Um, this is a very short and very fast um, uh, tutorial. Um, as part of the UMEP processor um, auto thermal comfort um, models, um, the Solvic, you need um, different type of input data. So previously I already um, show you how to generate the canopy DSM, sorry, the building and ground DSM, the canopy DSMs, and also um, the um, DEMs. Uh, from LiDAR point clouds and also from um, existing DEMs datasets. Today I will show you how to generate or create this UMEP land cover grid, which is one of the uh, requirements as well. Um, using the land cover scheme will override the emissivity and albedo values from the ground and will make your model more precise, your thermal comfort model more precise, in fact. So um, having said that, um, if you look at my previous um, video tutorial, I already cover the uh, DEM generation. As you can see here, this is the data set that generated the uh, DSM, which is the uh, ground and buildings, and also the canopy DSM, uh, which in, it's only um, um, normalized um, raster. Um, resulting from the subtraction of the canopy, the, the extraction of the vegetation plus the ground. And then I deducted that from, or subtracted the DM from all the raster. So if you look at my previous video, you will understand better how these three data sets were generated. But also I had one data set, which is, uh, is the building buildings um, footprints. Um, these are useful in this case because these building footprints will give you will give us the first layer um, of um, information that we need for um, the land cover. So, having said that, um, the land covers can be classified. I mean, can be generated from multiple uh, in multiple ways. You can use multispectral imagery, hyperspectral imagery. Um, you can use eCognition, which is another software um, for um, automatic generation or identification of classification of land covers. You can use supervised and unsupervised methods. Now I will show you the easiest and straightforward way, to, a very straightforward way to generate land covers for the UMEP. You, if you want to have a highly precision or your uh, spatial extent is really, really large, then you need to use supervised or unsupervised classification. You can use also uh, convolutional neural networks. There are multiple methods in, and softwares available out there. But here it's just a manual um, a process, which is really fast and it's, it's very useful when you have a, a very constrained or limited space which is not very, very large. Otherwise, it will be very time consuming. So one thing you need to add to this image is a um, base map. So in this case, I have um, these uh, maps. Um, I created those, I added these maps using um, a plugin. I will show you um, the plugin that I have installed. The name is Quick Map Services. So I just search it here and install it and will come with all these maps available. Um, obviously you need to go to the toolbox and also in the providers um, check that you also have all the, if, in case you need it, um, activate your uh, plugins also in your providers. In this case, you don't need it, but that's fine. Um, you can also um, in the settings, um, in, your, in the settings of the quick map provide, uh, quick map services, um, I added also more services like get contributed pack. So I got it a lot of quick maps services through this method. Um, many of them, they will not be available by default. So just be sure that you have all this information and also you get the contributed pack. 
So then I got to the ESRI, ESRI satellite, which is almost the easiest one. I turn off my DMs and then I have my building fructurins. So I have the first layer, but in fact, what you need to do is export this layer. So we're going to export the layer, um, save feature as, and then we are going to choose Lankova types. I already have one there created. Um, you can override it if you want, and then choose the um, coordinate reference system, and then um, leave the rest as it is and add it to the map, and that's all what you have to do. I already have that layer created here. Um, once you have done that, you have to open the attribute table, delete any extra information, and just create a new field. You can create it here, create a new field, and put uh, the name type and use a whole integer, a whole number or integer. Why we do that? Because um, the, so, um, the UMAP application used the land cover or reads the land cover based on um, a specific predetermined types. So there is not that much control about that. That's, um, that's one of the drawbacks, but you have um, seven classification of the land cover and I will show you in a minute. So the buildings are the number two. So you just need to add this in the editor uh, mode, number two, and then we're going to complete the rest uh, manually. But if you have um, supervised or unsupervised or any convolutional network or any, um, let's say, um, object-based um, classification of Lankova, not raster-based, but object-based, then you need to assign those values to your pixel values. Okay, so if we go, if we remember, we have originally our, this is the land cover um, layer provided by um, Gothen, in Gothenburg by the UMAP. Um, if we go to properties and we style um, based on the land cover style that is by default uh, provided by um, the UMAP tutorials that you see Paved is number one, buildings number two, evergreen trees and deciduous trees, grass, bare soil and water uh, up to number seven. This is what you see here. Okay. So having said that, we know already the numbers. You need to write it down in a notebook. So land cover types, some to list layer. So this is what we're going to do. So number two are buildings. We already have that created in our open attribute table. Now what we're going to do is uh, going to start digitizing all the surfaces. Now. Just to keep it simple, I will digitize a couple of surfaces, um, not to, uh, with very high detail, but just to provide an example of what to do. Now, um, this is very important. There is here a tool, which is an additional tool, tool toolbar, um, which is the ad, advanced digitizing toolbar, um, that it's really critical in this, or well, I think this toolbar is the, digitizing toolbar no let me check which one is this it's not the advanced it's the, it the advanced no um i think the name is snapping toolbar yep it's the snapping toolbar um you need to choose here avoid overlap on active layer and that's what we're going to do is we're going to simplify our process and you will see how that it works so just just be sure that this is selected then we choose the layer we activate the edition edit editor mode and then we start adding the polygon so the first polygon we're going to add is the grass grass was number five so we just add the polygon and we put the number five there so now let's start adding all the grass areas here just just to do this quickly i'm not going to go into too much details. You can digitize this with much more detail than me. Here we are. Um, try to go over the limit. This is very useful. Okay. <clears throat> don't worry. Don't constrain about it. If the, the, uh, the, the raster is just this 300 by 300, go a little bit beyond that boundary. Um, we can have a courtyard here, perhaps. and then one greenery area one green area here okay that's number five we will do the pave area at the very end because 
it doesn't distinguish between asphalt and and footpaths, which is something I would prefer to do it, but um, by default it's not possible. So we don't add that so level of detail and we can have water. Let's imagine this is our water. Let's imagine this is a not grass, but it's water. So water is number seven. We put that. Now around that, I want to have bare soil. So I will create it overlapping, but because we already activated the avoid the overlapping, see what's happened. We are going to add bare soil, which is number six. And we select that, it created automatically the hole here. Um, and it didn't allow to overlap both polygons. So it's really good we avoid the overlapping. Okay. And finally, we turn on our DM and then I'm will create a pave, let's say here, I will create a pave um, land cover at the very end. Why? Because this is very straightforward. Instead of digitizing each and every corner of your pave area, to just grab the create polygon and then try to go beyond the boundary of the raster of the DM and then put pave is number one. So Again, what it's going to create is it's going to create voids or it's going to avoid overlapping existing land covers. OK. Having done that, we save and we stop. Now we inspect our attribute table. So we have number seven here. That's number seven. That's number six. Number one, it's our pave area. So and the rest are buildings. Number five are grasses. OK, that's wonderful we have all what we need for the next step. We deselect everything. Yep. And what we're going to do now is to bring here, turn on the DEM. So DEM here, we're going to use a, a tool called rasterize and override the values of this DEM with the values of the attribute of the uh, Lankova shape file. But to avoid, of, uh, let's say destroying our DM, we're going to create um, a copy of that. So how to create a copy? Just we can export, save us, and we choose the appropriate location for that, generate land cover, and we can put um, land cover, land covers, dot tiff. Okay, we save and we preserve our uh, reference system the uh, resolutions and then we add it to the map okay so now this is our land covers as you can see it's just the dem but i'm using this to override the values with the land cover types okay so the next step is just to go to the processing tools you can turn it on here processing toolbox panel and we just click here and we just type rasterize and we rasterize with overwriting or we're going to override with an attribute. So we open the tool, we select our input layer, which is land cover type, our raster layer, which is land cover, and we're going to use the type as a value. Now, many people made the mistake that at burn in values to existing raster. So what's, if you click this, it will add the value to to the existing raster value, which is a DM and elevation. So it's not the correct way. Just check um, and check this uh, parameter. And then we just run it and it's finished. It's all done. Nothing is evident here. What we need is to remove this and then go to that layer, to that folder and add it again. And what you see here is our raster. If we inspect it. This is number seven. This is number one. Now we can obviously style um, this layer. It's better if we go here, we add the style and we load the style of the land covers, which is the default. As you see here, you have the grasses, you have the buildings, you have the paved area of the bare soil and the water. And this is another essential um, input data for your uh, Solveig model or for any other processor model you will may use as part of the UMEP. So I hope this tutorial has um, 
been very useful and help you to create these land cover maps very quickly. Um, if you have a large extent, I strongly recommend you to follow a more uh, a more remote sensing or GIS based approach or object based approach or raster based approach. Um, but if it is a limited area and you can digitize it, this is a very easy and a straightforward way to do it. OK, so that's all in this tutorial. In the next one, I will teach how to um, use um, um, generate your own methodological data um, or prepare your data or prepare an existing data and customize it. And then I will put all the previous tutorials together by running um, a very fast Solveig simulation using the DEMs and DSMs gen and Canopy DSMs generated from LiDAR, the land covers, and the meteorological data. So with all these tools, you will be able to simulate ther human th um, outdoor thermal comfort parameters and mean radiant temperature for any place in the world where you can get this equivalent data. Okay, so see you in the next video tutorial and um, see you till next time. Bye bye.